In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, another types of um, reaction in non-enzymatic browning, which is called uh, Mylar reactions. So, this uh, Mylar reaction is actually a, a phenomenon of browning of certain foods during the preparation and processing that involve heat. So, this reaction was first observed by French chemist Louis Mylar in 1912 after heating a solution that contained glucose and lysine. So in Mellard reaction, so what happened is you have uh, amine or amino acids or protein. It is reacted with uh, reducing sugars at high heat and it forms some flavors, aromas or dark colored pigment that is called as melanoidins. So what are the effects of Mylar reaction? So uh, this reaction occurs between reducing sugar and amines at high temperature, which will uh, produce flavor, produce color, or produce toxic products and also destroy uh, nutrient, for example, the lysine. Yeah? So uh, there are two uh, effects of a uh, mylar reaction the first one is the desirable so the desirable uh, effect which is uh, in terms of color so it will give uh, some um, brown color to the bread crust syrup or meat and it gives some uh, flavor to co coffee cocoa and also meats but there are also some undesirable effect which uh, also in terms of color because there, uh, there are changes in color during the storage and also changes in flavor during the processing and storage and also uh, nutritional loss, uh, loss of some essential amino acid, for example, lysine and also it will give uh, some uh, toxic product or mutagenic products. Yeah? So we will uh, look at this later. Uh, in the reaction of uh, in the mechanism or reaction in Mylar reaction. Yeah? Okay, if you look at this figure here, this is actually um, a summary of Mylar reaction that occur in foods. So here uh, I have uh, put some uh, different step uh, so that we can refer it to it later yeah, when we are discussing this reaction. So in step one. Uh, reducing sugar uh, is reacted with amino acids or other, other amino compounds and cause the loss of water because it is at high heat. So of course when high heat the water evaporates so it causes the loss of water and it forms N substituted glycosylamine. Okay and this uh, glycosylamine it will undergo Amadori rearrangement to give, uh, this is step 2, yeah? to give uh, one amino, one dioxy, two ketos. Okay, so this step 2, it can be, uh, the next step after step 2, um, it can be uh, either step 3A or step 3B. Yeah? So in step 3A, it will give you uh, furfural or hydroxymethyl uh, furfurals as what you observe in uh, caramelization. So these are the ones that respond uh, that are correspond to the uh, brown color. So uh, this uh, HMF, HMF uh, it will react with amino compound, so it will give you a melanoidin. Yeah? Uh, melanoidin is a brown nitrogenous polymer and copolymer. So in step 3B, uh, the Amadori product will uh, form, will turn into reduct. So this reductons uh, will undergo two different steps. The first one is dehydroreductons to, to give dehydroreductons. So this dehydroreductons will react with amino compound or decompose to give uh, this type of product which also leads to um, uh, step 5a, if this dehydroreductons uh, react with amino compounds, it will also give us uh, miladoinin, yeah? the brown compound. And then in step 4b, so you have this reductone, so it will react with amino acid in a reaction what we call as tracker reaction. 
So this striker reaction will give a striker degradation product. So uh, if it gives aldehyde, aldehyde will con convert, will be converted to melanoidin, and also there are some side products such as pyrazine, pyrroles, and thiazole. Okay, in step one, uh, which is also called a condensation step, yeah? so it involves a reversible condensation between alpha amino group of amino acid. Yeah? So if you look at amino acid here, we do have uh, two types of uh, amine group. Okay, uh, so the one that react uh, with uh, with the reducing sugar is this one, yeah? the alpha, uh, the amine at the alpha carbon. Yeah? So alpha carbon is the carbon that is next to this um, carboxylate group. Yeah? Okay, carboxyl group. And then what happened, you have uh, this NH2 here, amine group, it will react as a nucleophile because uh, normally uh, nitrogen has lone pair electron so it always become a nucleophile so it will attack this carbon at the reducing sugar because uh, this carbon is the most positive carbon because it attached to the oxygen which is the electron withdrawing uh, sub, uh, atom so it will give uh, this uh, protonated amine product and then uh, this is interconverted with uh, this structure so this structure is more um, stable compared to this one because it does not have any charge. And then, however, uh, this one also, uh, this uh, protonated amine product. So when when it loses water and then it undergoes cyclization, it will give us this uh, N-substituted glycosamine. So this is the first compound that form after the re, uh, reaction of um, amino acid and this uh, reducing sugar okay the rate of the first step is depend on the uh, kinetic of the sugar ring opening so uh, although pentoses uh, the rate of reaction is higher than those of other hexoses and also reducing disaccharide so although pentoses is um, reducing sugar that has a five membered ring because this is pentose and then uh, aldohexose is reducing reducing sugar that has a six membered ring and then reducing disaccharide is disaccharide usually have a two two uh, molecule of reducing sugar uh, aldo pentose and aldohexose is mono monosaccharide and this one is disaccharide where you have a two for example, if you have a disaccharide that has two dialdopentose, meaning you have a two uh, five-membered ring in the uh, disaccharide structure, okay. But aldohexoses also has different rate. So if you have D galactose, uh, the rate is higher than D menos, and D menos also has a higher rate compared to the D glucose. Okay, for step two of my lab reaction, uh, step two involves the Amadori rearrangement. Okay, once you have uh, an, an N substituted glycosylamine, so this uh, N substituted glycosylamine uh, undergo Amadori re re rearrangement, which involves the presence of acid catalyst and also. Um, leads to the formation of ketosamine or 1-amino, one 1-deoxyketose, one yeah? as what you have seen in the uh, first uh, uh, figure just now. So this ketosamine, they are relatively stable compound and they are formed in maximum yield in system with 18% water content. Okay, so this is the glycosylamine. So it undergo Amadori rearrangement in the presence of this is acid, yeah? acid catalyst. So what happened is that um, this uh, nitrogen uh, has extra hydrogen here because of the acid, and then uh, there are uh, some um, hydrogen shift occur. Some uh, of the electron migrates, and the first step here, here this step. This mechanism involves 
the amount, uh, protonation of the nitrogen atom at carbon 1. Yeah? This is involve protonation of nitrogen atom at carbon 1 and then uh, some electron uh, migrate and then electron transfer, uh, electron uh, uh, transfer of electron. So at last, um, this uh, hydrogen plus is removed and then when it is uh, removed from uh, the compound, it undergo rearrangement again. So lastly, it will give you a Madori compound, which is the ketosamine. Ketosamine, yeah? Okay. And then this ketosamine, which is the amodary product, will be converted to HMF. In this one, you can refer to step 3A yeah, in the first uh, figure. So this is a Madori product. So it will be interconverted with uh, one to anin amino. So this is the enol form. This is the keto form. Okay. So normally keto form is uh, more stable lah compared to enol form, and then uh, it uh, eliminates a hydroxide ion. So it become enol. And then when there is a presence of water, it will uh, form a 3 dioxy hexosulose and then uh, remove again the water. So it will, uh, the final product is the hydroxy uh, methyl furfural or HMF. Yeah? Okay, this uh, HMF will then, um, will then be converted to uh, it will polymerize, meaning uh, there are many, many uh, units of this HMF. You know, polymerize means uh, you have a few units of this. And then once it polymerizes, it will give a dark colored and insoluble material uh, containing nitrogen, which is called as melanoidin. Okay, melanoidin. So the other uh, side product is the pyrolytic product. Uh, you can also refer to the first uh, figure that summarizes all the uh, reaction of a uh, mylar reaction. Okay, uh, these are some of the pyrolytic uh, compound that form, which is the decomposition product. So they are also maltol and isomaltol. So these are the one that give uh, the flavor, the flavor, uh, um, the flavor to the um, food yeah, that undergo mylar reaction. Okay, uh, and another um, concurrent step with the step 3A, we also have step 4B, which is the Strecker reaction. So the Strecker reaction uh, is a reaction between alpha dicarbonate compound formed in the malate reaction and amines. And the reaction will yield amino ketones, aldehyde and also carbon dioxide. Okay. So what happened in the striker degradation? So you know that when uh, when that particular compound undergo a striker reaction, they will form uh, a striker degradation product. So this uh what happened? So you have the dicarbonyl. So this dicarbonyl react with uh, amine, and then it involve uh, the loss of water. So it will give you uh, this compound. And then there are also few water losses, so it will give you uh, some degradation, degraded product. So in this case, it has um, aldehyde, which is the striker aldehyde, and then um, ammonia and carbon dioxide. And this uh, striker aldehyde will give you rich nutty or a meaty flavor. Yeah? Okay. Okay, when we talk about a uh, malat reaction, do you remember when I said about uh, the effect of the malat reaction? The first, uh, the last one is the mutagen, yeah? the toxic compound that will be obtained from this malat reaction. So, uh, for example, if we have asparagine, yeah? asparagine, if we have we use uh, amino acid asparagine, so this uh, main amino acid asparagine will in undergo mylar reaction it will convert it into a striker product okay this is striker product 
Stacker product usually have amine and also uh, carbonyl. So this is amide. Nah. This is an amide because you have uh, amine with the carbonyl. Okay, this amide, it will undergo um, some reaction to give acryl amide. So this acryl amide is actually a neurotoxicant and a weak human carcinogen. Even though it is a weak human carcinogen, but a continuous, uh, con continuous consumption of acryl amide will cause uh, cancer. Yeah. Okay, so uh, in terms of acryl amide in food, so level of acryl amide have been reported in a variety of food products that are made by frying, baking and roasting. So uh, if you prepare food through frying, baking and roasting, there is a risk of the formation of acryl amide. Yeah? And acryl amide is not detected in unheated or boiled food stuff. Okay. For example, if uh, we have, uh, we want to eat, um, you know chicken, chicken has uh, some amino acid in there. Maybe it has some asparagine, not sure. But then uh, this one, if we, if we fry the chicken or if we bake the chicken, it will probably there are some acrylamide form. But if you eat um, boiled chicken, Okay, boiled chicken it will not uh, form it will not form any acrylamide. So in terms of uh, preparation to avoid uh, consume acrylamide, so of course uh, steaming or um, boiling is a uh, more uh, is a safer option lah. Okay, so acrylamide is a known neurotoxicant and a weak uh, human carcinogen. So if if we look at the uh, list of the foods here, if we have uh, almonds, you look at this almond, it has a, a very uh, high volume of uh, acrylamide. Uh, PPBs here means part per billion. Uh, part per billion. Okay, in bread, it range uh, from 0 to 300 something and in cookies and in French fries, it can be as uh, as much because uh, acrylamide uh, if if you read um, lots of journal so most of the uh, paper uh, finding is um, usually acrylamide is detected in a potato based product yeah, which is like the french fries and also um, potato chips Okay, so acrylamide uh, is derived from the reaction between reducing sugar and amino group of free L-asparagine. Okay, the reaction occurs via uh, shift based intermediates when it undergoes decarboxylation followed by a carbon carbon bond cleavage. It will give acrylamide, whose atoms are derived from the L-asparagine. Okay, this is how uh, acrylamide. Uh, basically form in food so this is actually the same the same thing that we have been discussing in the previous slide so you have a glucose and then l asparagine so it will react to give you a shift base and then this shift base undergo decarboxylation and it will give you decarboxylated shift base and uh, this decarboxylated shift base uh, when you react with water so it will decompose into acrylamide plus a glucose and also ammonia okay uh, to form acrylamide in food there are also some uh, certain condition that is needed so the first one is the minimum temperature of 120 degrees and it cannot occur in high moisture foods and normally uh, we require a pH of 4 to 8 so how do we minimize the formation of acrylamide in food? So uh, there are two strategies here that can be used. The first one is removal of ID, either one or both of the substrate. You know that uh, when when a uh, amylate reaction happen when you have a uh, protein plus reducing sugar. Okay. So uh, exam first example here you can soak 
let's say you have a potato, you soak that potato in water, so it can reduce 60% uh, of acrylamide level within processed potato product by removing a reaction substrate, meaning you reduce the sugar and free asparagine. When you soak it in water, some of the reducing sugar and free asparagine will dissolve. And then uh, when, when more of it is being removed from the um, source, so the less uh, acrylamide will be formed uh, during the cooking. Okay. Uh, next strategy is altering the process condition. So the first one is using a reagent modification. For example, protonation of asparagine by lowering the pH, protonation of the alpha amino group of asparagine to reduce its nucleophilic potential. And you can also convert the asparagine to aspartic acid with uh, asparaginase. This one is the enzyme that, that is used to uh, convert asparagine to aspartic acid. And also you can incorporate some salt which have been shown to mitigate acrylamide formation. And you can also optimize the thermal processing condition uh, in terms of temperature and time to minimize the formation or minimize the acrylamide level. So maybe you can use like a slow cooker, um, slow, um, low temperature, but require uh, low temperature so that uh, it will not give you um, high acrylamide, uh, acrylamide level. Okay, so this is the end of this video uh, on the malate reaction. So next video, I will continue on enzymatic browning. Yeah. Okay, thank you for listening.